Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining me. My name is Carrie Newman. I have been an outreach teacher at Small World Yoga for um, about four years, uh, starting in 2016. I've taught at a few locations, uh, including the Global Education Center and Fat Bottom Brewery. And most recently, I was teaching at New Horizons, which was a closed outreach location. Today, we are going to be doing a little bit of restorative yoga. Um, you'll need a few things, and we can also uh, modify if you don't have exactly the things. So I'm going to be using two blocks today, two yoga blocks. If you don't have two yoga blocks, that's OK. See if you can find two books um, in your house that are roughly the same size. And if you have the yoga blocks, go ahead and grab those. We're going to be using, I'm going to be using a bolster. If you have a bolster, go ahead and grab it. If you don't have a bolster, that's okay. You can make one out of a blanket. So you can just find any blanket in your house and you can roll that up into a nice little roll and we'll be able to use that as a bolster. I have a second blanket here because um, I like to cover myself up when I'm practicing restorative yoga because sometimes I get chilly and also just because it's really comfortable and I get really relaxed and I like to um, have a blanket to get me even more relaxed. So you can um, set up your yoga mat. If you don't have a yoga mat, that's fine too. You can just set up a nice little space for you to get comfortable. We're going to start in a regular seated position. So you can just cross your legs if that's comfortable and go ahead and sit down. I'm going to have a block nearby. We'll just start by dropping in to the moment, the room. You can let your shoulders start to relax away from your ears and let your neck get soft on the right and the left sides. And you can like adjust your sitting position however you feel more comfortable. Start with a breath in and a breath out. And so we're going to start by just some little small movements. So we're going to take a twist over to your right. So you're going to go to your right side, bring your left hand to your right knee, and bring your right hand to the floor behind you. I'm just going to take an easy little twist. Try to lift your spine up a little bit. And then you can come back through center. I'm going to go to the other side. So this time, your right hand comes to your left knee. Left hand comes right to the floor behind you. And just a gentle twist, nice and easy. You don't need to try and twist really hard or force anything. And then come on back through center. From here, we're going to take a forward fold. I love to use a block in my forward fold. So if you have a block or whatever you're using, I'll set my block up right in front of me so that I can rest my forehead right on the block in my fold. When you're ready, you can just fold forward. You can adjust your block to come closer to your head. Just start to let your arms relax and start to let your forehead rest into the block. The hips are just resting into the floor as you let your spine fold forward. And then you can use your hands and your palms. Just walk your spine all the way back up to your seat. Move your block out of the way for a second and then we'll switch the cross of the legs. So just switch other leg crossed forward. Whichever side you started on, just go ahead and switch. Now we're going to take that block again, or a book, whatever you're using. Bring it to the left side of your body, right next to your hip. And then bend your elbow and bring your forearm right over to your block. And just let yourself lean over to one side. We'll start to stretch a little bit into the right side of the body. Let yourself really just kind of lean over. And then when you're ready, reach your arm across the right side of your head, along the right side of your ear. Try and keep your right hip connected to the floor and just stretch. A 
let your right arm come back down. You're gonna press into your left forearm, bring your body back up to center, and then we'll just switch. Just switch your block over to the other side. And then same, same, bend your right elbow and start to lean over into your block. Lean over into your forearm. Let your left hip continue to sit into the floor. And then when you're ready, reach. Stretch your left arm alongside your left ear. Continue to just kind of slide in towards the right side. Hmm. And then just stay for another round of breath. Let the left arm relax. Press into your right forearm, come back up to center. We're gonna take another forward fold. So you can bring your block back forward. And then you can also stack blocks or stack your props to bring the ground closer to you. So if you're feeling like you're forward folding and you're not able to find something to rest your head into, maybe try your second block. Or maybe you could even try adding your blanket if you'd like even more. You can create as much padding and as much support as you'd like, and then you can come forward. And then go ahead and come back up. Move your props out of the way. But keep them nearby. I like to keep my props in the store nearby so I can just reach out and grab them as I'm practicing and I don't have to come completely out of a pose in order to find my props. So then we're going to turn back and come on to the back. So go ahead and lay down on your mat for just a moment or just lay on the floor wherever you're using. Just let your body lay down for a moment and let the whole back of your body rest into the ground beneath you. And then you can bend one knee, place the foot on the floor. Bend the other knee, place the foot on the floor. Let the back of your hips rest into the ground now that you've bent your knees. And then take a few movements from side to side with your knees. If you'd like, you can go all the way over so that your outer knee touches the ground and then come back. And if you'd like to go all the way over and touch the ground, or if you'd like to take smaller side to sides, that's great too. Let your knees come back to center. And then without using your hands, if you can, if you would like to use your hands, please feel free. Just bring your knees a little closer to your chest, like you're pulling them in, but you're just using the legs and the lower body. And then take some side to sides with your knees. Now you can bring the hands in, the hands can touch the tops of the knees, and now maybe these are gonna become some little circles. Go the other way. Bring your feet back down to the floor. Grab your block or your book, whatever you're using. And then we're gonna to come to a supported bridge posture. We'll take this block. And I usually like to take this at the lowest height to start just to see. So a little horizontal low height on your block. Lift your hips and bring the block underneath your hips. And then you can just let your hips come back down and see how that feels. So it should feel like the very bottom of your spine, the sacrum, the flat bone, is resting right on the flat surface of your block. So if you've got the block kind of up into your low back and your um, glutes are hanging down, bring the block lower and just let your hips rest. And you can let your arms relax onto the floor or maybe they want to rest on your body. You can also add 
a blanket to your hips. This is one of my favorite things to do. I just love the feeling, kind of like a weighted blanket, right? I just love the feeling of the blanket on my hips as I rest. Just a supported bridge posture, a very, very gentle little back bend. And so you can stay right here with your knees bent. You can also start to straighten your legs out a little bit, maybe just one at a time to see how it feels. So you can start with one leg and see if you want to slide it forward. Maybe that leg stretches all the way out and you can rest it. And then maybe you can stretch the other leg out. See how that feels. Make sure that feels okay in your low back. So if you stretch your legs out and your low back feels like, wow, that's really not comfortable, you just go ahead and bring everything back. I'm going to stay like this for a few more rounds of breath because this is feeling nice in my body. Let's see if you can let your legs relax and the heels. So if you feel your heels touching the ground with your legs stretched out here, just let the feet get kind of heavy. Maybe the feet splay out to the sides. Letting everything relax as much as possible into the block, into the floor. Your eyes can be closed or open as you rest. And if your legs are stretched out, before we move out of a restorative bridge pose, just bend both of your knees and bring them out. So we're going to come out the way that we came in. Let your feet touch the floor and let the back of the hips rest on the block for just a second. If you had the blanket on your hips, you can maybe move that off of the hips. Go ahead and lift your hips up. Bring the block out from under your hips. Slowly let your hips come back down to the floor. And just take a little pause. You've been in a gentle back bend, but just take a pause for your hips to come back to the ground. Once again, you can do some of those little circles with the knees and the hips by bringing the knees closer to the chest. And take some circles. And then take some circles the other way. And then you can let both knees fall over to one side, whichever one just feels natural because we're gonna use this to press back up to a seat. Roll all the way over to one side and then use your top arm. Go ahead and press back up for just a moment. So now we're going to do one of my favorite little releases for the chest muscles and the front of the body. I'll take this off so that you can see where I'm going to be placing the blocks. I'm going to demo this um, from a seated position so that you can see how this is going to be. We're going to take your two blocks. So take your blocks and you can just bring them out in front of you and bring the top corners together. So these blocks look sort of like little wings. 
And then I'll show you just from this sitting up position, these blocks are gonna rest right beneath your collarbones. Your chin is gonna be able to fit on into this little space. The blocks may stay together like this or they may move slightly apart to accommodate the width of the shoulders. And you see the undersides of these block is gonna press right into the pec muscle below your collarbone. And this can be a really nice release in the front of the chest, especially if you've been typing, you've been sitting in a chair, you've been on the computer, scrolling or doing something when things get a little shorter. This might be a nice release for this area right in the place below the collarbones. And releasing and softening here may also help any tightness that you feel in the back of the shoulders. So we're going to do this on the belly. So I'll just like give you that example again. Now you can bring your blocks to your mat. I put them on my mat the way that I showed you with the little wings together. And now I can go ahead and lay down on my belly and bring my chest down to the blocks and I can experiment, right? I can let my head drop down, see my chin rest in between the blocks and that may make me realize I'll bring the blocks out a little more so that I can get the full width of my shoulders resting onto the blocks. And then I'm just gonna lay my head down I can bring my forehead to the mat if I like. My arms can rest right where they are if that's feeling good. Or if you'd like to bring your arms back behind you. Or if you'd like to bring your arms further forward and let them rest that way. It all kind of depends on what feels best in the place below your collarbone. So just go ahead and find a place that feels comfortable and start to find a place to just get a little bit still and soften. You can always adjust. So as I've gotten into this shape and spent about three breaths, I realize I would like to move the blocks out just a little bit wider so I can access a little bit more lateral wider portion of my chest muscle. So you can feel free to move anytime. Right, and give yourself definitely about 10 or maybe even 20 or more breaths here if you can so that you have time to notice how things shift in the shape or if you'd like to make any shifts in how you're set up to best suit you to release the muscles in the chest. Before starting to move, just keeping in mind the blocks underneath and just keep that in mind as you place your hands. You can place your hands onto the floor, kind of outside of your shoulders and your chest, and just gently start to lift your body up. 
You can press back a little bit and move the blocks off of your mat. Always keep them nearby. I use blocks in so many, so many poses in my vinyasa practice and in my restorative practice. So after that shape, we're gonna come to a puppy posture. So we've come from here, we're gonna come back. Stack your hips over your knees. You may wanna shift back if you're towards the front of your mat or you need some more space. And then keeping the hips and the knees stacked together, we are gonna crawl the arms forward and take a puppy posture, nice other chest opener after a chest release. You can let your head come to the floor. You can also grab a block if you'd like to bring the floor a little closer to you as you drop the chest down. Same, same as you just come out really gently, use your arms to press maybe about halfway back. You can come all the way back up to a seat for just a moment and just roll the shoulders back and away. Take a few shoulder rolls back, a few shoulder rolls forward. We'll rotate the neck a little bit from side to side. Great. So the next shape we are going to take is, uh, we're gonna take a legs up the wall shape. So if you um, are setting up to practice, you can get yourself to a place where you are near a wall uh, as you start the practice or you can move over to someplace closer so that you have access to a wall. Um, a closed door is also good. Um, just some place where you're gonna be able to have a little bit of support. You can keep a block nearby. A blanket is also helpful. Um, you can also, if you'd like to just use a pillow, uh, a regular old bed pillow or couch pillow is great. Um, I also like to have um, an eye pillow. So this is a, an actual eye pillow. It's got lavender um, and I think barley inside. You can make your own eye pillow. It's pretty easy. You don't have to sew anything or have a sewing machine. You can simply take a clean sock and put some dry beans inside. Um, if you have some lavender, like if you want to put some oil in it, essential oil, um, and you can just make your own little eye pillow, relaxes the eyes as you relax. So if you'd like to add that. So for legs up the wall, we're gonna get closer to the wall and you can go ahead and just scoot one hip up to the wall. It doesn't matter which side. You'll scoot one hip up to the wall, maybe so it even touches. So you can just get really connected to the wall. And then you're gonna scoot your tush even more and then slide your legs up the wall. And then you'll go ahead and try and scoot your glutes as close as you can so that your legs are up the wall and that your sitting bones are connecting to the lower part of the wall if you can. You can support yourself if you'd like to lift. You can bring a block and put that right underneath your sacrum, kind of like we were, I mean, not kind of, exactly like we were in your restorative bridge pose. So that might be one thing. You can also take, if you don't want the block or that is too high or just maybe a little not comfortable, you can also use a blanket. So you would press your feet into the wall to lift up and then maybe you put that blanket underneath the backs of your hips. If you'd like, you can take an eye pillow, place that over your eyes, you can go ahead and let your arms stretch out wide if you'd like, or bring them in to rest on the belly or the body or the rib cage. You can stay right here. You can do a lot of different things with your legs. So straight up the wall sometimes is nice, but sometimes it feels like 
my hamstrings are a little too tight for that or I'm not ready. Sometimes I like to take this up a wall with my feet together and my knees dropping out wide. Or sometimes I like to take this with a wide V leg so you can take the legs out wide. Basically, it's really just find the way to make your self comfortable that you can stay. So if you've got your legs out really wide and you're finding you have to work really hard in your inner legs to hold this, then maybe let's try and find something a little more comfortable so that you don't have to try so hard. You don't have to really put a lot of effort. Restorative is about less effort. You can also bend the knees and just place the feet right on the wall and let the knees come a little closer to the chest. You can create any variation that feels good. You can let your spine relax. <sighs> you can let the back of your head relax into the ground. You can change the setup of your legs as often as you'd like to or feels useful in the shape. Sometimes if I'm going to stay in this shape for a nice amount of time, I may go ahead and get my other blanket so I can cover up my upper body and rest. See if you can give yourself at least 10 or 20 breaths or maybe even staying here for like three minutes or maybe even five minutes. Just give yourself the opportunity to really just rest into the shape. I'm starting to bend the knees. Letting yourself have at least a nice 10 or 20 breaths here. You can stay as long as you'd like. 
giving yourself as much time as you'd like in each shape. A nice way to come out of the shape when you're ready to move. I just start to fold my legs over to one side and just come onto my side. Take a little pause. You can have your arm be a little pillow. Just give yourself a little pause on your side. And then use your top arm and let yourself just press up again, just coming to another, maybe not fully a seat or just maybe to the knees so that you can sit back. So the next shape that we're going to do, which is going to be the final shape of the practice, um, we're going to do a supported little chest and front body opener. We have a lot of different ways that we can do this. And I'm gonna show you a couple different things. And again, you can choose based on the props that you have or um, what's most comfortable. So a lot of times I'll do this heart opener um, with blocks because I get a nice lift in the chest and that feels really good in my body. So we are going to, I'm gonna show you the options and then I'm gonna set up and demo how it'll look. So. We can take these two blocks and we'll put one at this middle size height. And then we're gonna put one behind it at the highest height. So if we look at what we're doing, this is gonna be where your shoulder blades are gonna rest on your back. And this is gonna be where your head is gonna rest, the back of your head. So we'll come in and we'll start to set up so that we can lay back. And when you lay back, you can figure out if anything needs to be moved. And we can go ahead and set up like that so the head can rest here on the block. And then the legs can do whatever feels good. If you want to stretch them out, that's great. If you want to take bound angle and bring them together and let the knees drop out, or if you'd like to cross them, or you can do any variation of those things. Sometimes I start in one shape with my legs and part of the way through, I end up wanting to change that. So if you don't have blocks, that's okay. I'm gonna roll off so that I can show you. Um, if you don't have blocks, that's perfectly fine if you're using something else. If you have a bolster, that's fine. You can do pretty much the same thing by bringing your back of your hips up to the bolster and then just laying back. Same, same with the legs. You can stretch them out, you can bring them in. If you don't have a bolster, you can do the same thing with just a regular bed pillow, or you can take one of your blankets, like I showed you at the beginning of the practice, and you can roll it up and make a blanket roll that's also like a bolster. And then you can sit back and do the same thing. You can stretch your legs or bring them in. If you're using your eye pillow, you can grab that here and bring that over your eyes. If you have another blanket, you can bring that onto your hips. You can let your head drop back. You can let your arms rest.
Again, be sure to try and give yourself as much time as you can to rest here. When you're practicing at home, knowing that you can always, like you can pause this class while it's happening so that you can stay in the shape for a longer time for as long as you'd like. So once you get set up in any of these shapes, you can actually pause before while you set yourself up and get and decide how you're going to set up. You can actually pause the practice so that you can spend more time. Maybe you want to spend a whole lot of time in one of the shapes. So you can pause the practice so that you can stay. When you feel like you are ready to move, when you're done resting, you just start to gently wiggle your toes and your fingers. Be mindful of any props that you have underneath you. So if you're resting on the blocks or resting on a bolster, just remembering that as you start to come out, you can just take an easy roll onto the side, take it really easy. And then go ahead and press yourself up to your seat the way that you started your practice. Just take a moment to let the shoulders soften, let your hands, your arms rest anywhere they'd like. Maybe just dropping into your lap or down by your sides. Let your arms get as heavy as possible. Bring your hands to the front of your body, just to your belly and to your chest. Take a moment to acknowledge yourself just for showing up, just for coming to your mat, taking your time for yourself. And then one more moment to just acknowledge and dedicate some of the benefits of your practice to share them to with someone else, maybe a person or a place or a pet. Take a deep breath in through your nose. And breathe out. And gently let your eyes flutter open. With gratitude for this practice, for this community, and for each one of you, thank you so much for showing up and sharing your practice with me. Namaste. Yeah, and thank you again for showing up. Thanks for watching. Um, this video will be on the YouTube channel for Small World Yoga, so you can practice this anytime along with any of our other classes um, on the YouTube channel. Check them out. Um, be sure to also check out Small World Yoga's Instagram um and facebook and you can get more information about other classes some live classes that are being streamed um some zoom classes so definitely be sure to check out small world yoga facebook instagram and our youtube channel thanks a lot again for watching and have a really great day